In today's video, we're going to do a follow-up on the Mac Mini as a NAS video using the Power Mac MDD. All right, let's get started. We are again in the screen sharing environment on our Power Mac MDD this time around. We have another drive, a SATA 320GB here. That's in addition to the local storage that we have here. That's just called Macintosh at this point. Apparently it was so low definition that it lost HD there. A couple folders there. We'll go over the sharing process once more. We go to System Preferences and Sharing. And we make sure file sharing is enabled. We have three shares here. We have apps, video and local. Video and apps are both on the 320 gigabyte drive. Local is on the local disk, the Macintosh HD. I've given everyone read and write permissions so we can do whatever we like on these shares. And that's basically all we need to do in terms of configuration over there. In terms of hardware, this machine is not all that much different from the, uh, for the Mac Mini G4 that we used in the previous video. We have twice the RAM now, but we still have 1.25 GHz PowerPC G4. We did get some extra level 3 cache though. The main difference is in its uh, Ethernet card. In terms of graphics, just 9000 Pro, basic USB. But uh, we did add SATA through a PCI card, so we have some extra storage there. If you want to see what your network speed is running at, just go to Network Utility and select your Ethernet interface, it's EN0. We can see we have an IP address here, 197, and our link speed is 1 gigabit. The Mac Mini G4 is limited to 100 megabit Ethernet, or fast Ethernet, and that was his main bottleneck. So we're going to find out with some big files here. Um, if there is a difference between a locally attached IDE drive and the SATA disk that is connected through PCI, um, and whether the 100 megabit limit was really holding us back, or perhaps it's just the disk that we're going to run into in terms of bottlenecking. I guess we'll find out pretty soon. We just have to go to Finder, because this time around we're on a Mac, and browse to the G4MDD. It is mounted here. We'll open up the apps, and local doesn't really matter. Again, local is the local IDE disk, and apps is the SATA disk. And now we'll need to add another network source that we can copy some files from. We'll go for our Plex machine. We should have guest access on that as well. Because I know we have a pretty good little file here. This fireplace 4k.mkv is a 7.3 gigabyte file. This was a test file we used last time, just 100 megab uh, megabytes in size. We'll use this first, we'll copy it to apps. And see how fast that goes. Yep, almost instant, so the gigabit is working properly. We'll copy it to the local share as well. Pretty much the same. Good to know. Now we'll copy the 7.3 gigabyte file to the SATA disk. We'll see if it uh, gets up to speed here. Also, in the meantime, see if we can bring up Activity Monitor, because it's, it'll take a while to copy those files over. The machine does appear to be struggling a bit now. It's not actually coming up at all. Also shows in transfer speeds. If it had to make an assumption or a guess, uh, a guesstimate, it was going at about 20-25 megabytes per second. It's now picking up speed again. Although still no activity monitor. Here we go. Interesting though, it does not really appear. I guess it only logs my processes here. Yeah, let's go to all processes. 
Yeah, it's definitely uh, Apple file server process is just pinning the CPU. So it's good. we're completely CPU limited now. And we're not really approaching the 100 megabits, or megabytes rather, uh, limit that these hard drives can do, or the network can do. These are pretty speedy IDE drives and SATA drives, so it has an ATA 133 bus, so pretty good. It actually appears to have stopped somewhat. Every now and again it, it just chugs a bit and then gets back up to speed. Appears to be doing somewhere around 30 to 50 megabytes per second, just judging from how fast that uh, copy is going. Okay, I've seen enough for that one. I'll also try it with the local disk, see if that makes a difference. Should, just, should still just pin the CPU really. It's going a bit faster. We saw that last time as well. It really speeds up a bit at the beginning and then slows down gradually. See there it just completely stops and hangs. Guess that's when the CPU is just fully pinned and it needs to think about it for a bit. Don't really see much of a speed difference here in terms of transfers between the SATA disk and ID disk. So I guess the PCI bus is not really bottlenecking us all that much. And it does make things a hell of a lot easier with these MDDs because, yeah, they are loud. You can probably hear it in the background, but they can hold a couple of a good couple of uh, couple of drives if you have the extra sled. You can put uh, four drives in there, if you can use SATA disks, that, uh, that does help a lot. It has three IDE channels. If you want to go IDE RAID or whatever, you can totally do that, but SATA would be a bit more convenient. But it'll uh, happily take drives up to two terabytes, no problem, so... You could, in fact, turn an MDD or a more quiet machine would probably be preferred, like a uh, Quicksilver, uh, into an ass, so... Let's just stop that copying. <laughs> so at least we found out that uh, if you only have like a 1 gigahertz or 1.25 gigahertz, in this case, G4 CPU, it does not really matter that you have gigabit Ethernet, you will not be able to fully achieve gigabit speeds because the CPU is just too weak. Now this could also be because I'm running a Leopard, and Leopard is a bit heavier, and I'm also using VNC to remote into it, etc, etc. There's a couple things that will influence the speed. But uh, VNC didn't need to do anything because it was just sitting here idle at the desktop, so it doesn't need to render anything. So I don't think that was too much of a problem here. So yeah, I guess that concludes our little experiment of turning some old G4 Max into NASes and seeing where the limits are. I guess we finally found our bottleneck. It is the G4 CPU. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.